Okay, let's talk about the remainder theorem. And this is a really cool theorem in uh, mathematics. And it's typically taught at like the Algebra 2 or College Algebra level or Intermediate um, Algebra. Those are all different names for kind of your second year algebra course. But So you're not going to, uh, as a general rule, you're not going to see this topic in Algebra 1. But what it involves is, here we have a polynomial function. It's a, when you're studying polynomials, okay, so this is a polynomial function, there's a lot of theorems, more advanced theorems um, about polynomials. And polynomials are just so cool. You probably don't realize how much of math is, especially at the algebra level, involves polynomials. Okay, there's just a ton of things that we know about them and are really cool to work with. And we are going to use this problem here as our, our example. Now, if you're not familiar with what this thing is right here, you're like, well, what it, what's this? Well, this is uh, synthetic division, okay? So if you're not familiar with synthetic division of a polynomial, I'm going to explain that as well. So we're going to have a nice, enjoyable discussion about the remainder theorem, and we're going to get to that in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tab at Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online video-based math help programs there is. I'm going to leave a link to that, um, my program, in the description of this video. I'll let you be the judge of that, but basically um, it goes, I teach far beyond what I could do, let's say, on YouTube, okay, and I solve thousands of problems, okay, so you, when you want to know how to do a particular problem, I have you know, videos on so many problems. It's a really unique program. Again, I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, also, as a math teacher, I just can't help to stress every time I have an opportunity to speak to a student the importance of note-taking, okay? After decades of teaching math, there's one rule of thumb that I always uh, firmly believe in. Those students with the best math notes have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. If your math notes are anything less than stellar, okay, or sloppy or unorganized, or maybe you don't take math notes, or maybe your dog ate your math notes and your homework, okay, that can happen. If that's a situation where you still need something to study from, you certainly have to uh, start correcting that. You have to, you know, uh, make a commitment to start taking good math notes, okay? That's going to be the first thing you need to do in terms of improving in mathematics. But if you need something to study from, and you do need something to study from, I offer math notes. Uh, those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. And this subject here you would find in my algebra two trigonometry notes. Okay, let's get into the remainder theorem. So when you're studying the remainder theorem, or a lot of things in advanced mathematics, you're generally given something like this as a definition. And it says, uh, the remainder of a polynomial divided by x minus k is equal to f of k. And you might be like, uh, what does that mean? Okay, so uh, this is part of you learning math, okay? Well, you have to try to read these definitions and stuff um, and make sense of them. All right, that's part of your what's maturing process of mathematics because the more advanced mathematics that you do study, you're given very specific definitions. So this doesn't make a lot of sense to you. Um, I'm going to show you an example, and then you know this will make sense. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about the remainder theorem. What is this all about? Okay. Well, obviously we're talking about something with the remainder, and when you're thinking about a remainder of something, right? You're thinking about like, oh, division, right? Two goes into five, two, that's four, uh, remainder one, right? So that's kind of what we're talking about. And yes, the remainder that we're talking about is effectively something like that. All right, here is the main, main thing about the remainder theorem. Here is my polynomial function. Let's suppose I say, hey, Mr. Function, I want to evaluate you for two, okay? In other words, I want to find f of two of this polynomial function, okay? All right, just pretty typical thing that we do with functions. So to find f of two, I write it this way, and everywhere there's an x, I plug in my nice little lovely two there, and then I go ahead and simplify. So two cubed is eight, all right? So we'll write that this way, and you could just see the math. Two squared is four. And this will be 32 minus 8. You can see everything that's going on. 
And so I've determined that f of 2 equals 31. Okay, f of 2 equals 31. Now, let's just kind of take this a step further. Okay, f of 2, if you think about it on a table, right, x and y, when x was 2, y is 31. Remember, y is the same thing as f of x. So this point right here is on this graph, right, 2, 31. So just making some additional connections here um, with things. So 2, 31, that uh, ordered pair is on this graph of this polynomial, okay? Now, we do have to recognize that this is a polynomial, all right? So I'm going to take that. I'm going to just make that assumption that you know the definition of a polynomial. So, you know, as I have this little discussion with you, you're like, oh, man, do I even know what a polynomial is, like, specifically? Okay, and do I understand how to evaluate a function? So if you're with me so far, good stuff. All right, now, here's the thing. I just took this function right here and this polynomial function, and I just evaluated it for f of 2. Okay, now I did it like kind of like, I want to say the traditional way of doing things. Okay, kind of like how we do all functions. We plug it in and we simplify. So we know that f of 2 uh, turned out to be um, 31. Now, the remainder theorem will, will, uh, is a theorem that will allow us to evaluate this function, okay, for a particular value, okay, uh, using a different technique. So, in other words, uh, I want to evaluate this function for 2. Well, I don't have to do all of this stuff. There's another thing I can do, and it's really, really cool, all right? And it's called the remainder theorem, all right? So let's take a look at that. Again, the remainder theorem is another approach to evaluating a polynomial function for a specific uh, numeric value. Let's just kind of like think of it like that. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we got to know a little bit about synthetic division. Synthetic uh, division, of course, I'm abbreviating because I I'm such a poor speller, I would definitely mess that up. But synthetic division is really, really, really cool, okay? And this is kind of special, a special case uh, skill, or let me say here, a special case of polynomial long division. And that could be kind of difficult for students, but if you're not familiar with synthetic division, here's um, uh, the way it works, All right? So here is our function, and you can see, our lovely function here is written in standard form, highest to lowest power, right? So we have x cubed, x squared, x, and 5. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write the coefficients of our polynomial function written in standard form uh, like so. We're going to put a four, our 4 here, our negative 2 we're going to put right there, 1 right there, and uh, 5 right there. Now, I want to explain something to you real quick. If... If I th if this is my function like so, okay, you'd be like, well, there was let's say there was no x, it was just five. Uh, would you just write four negative two five? The answer is no. Each power has to be represented. So the x cubed, x squared, an x and the number. So here I would just plug uh, plug in a zero, okay. I would do I would have a zero there um, as a placeholder. So this would be the setup not this, okay? So now again, I have to kind of remember what our function was. There was an x there, right? Okay. So this was our problem. So that's 1x, and there you go. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. And now the second thing you do, once you have all your coefficients set up, okay, and we're going to get to the purpose of synthetic division, is you draw this little L bracket like so. Okay, there's a couple different stylistic ways of doing this, but this is the one that's probably the most common. You just draw a little L bracket, you leave yourself enough room to put numbers down there, and then down underneath the last number, like so, you make yourself a little like box. And this is going to be where our remainder is going to be. All right, and this is going to be where our remainder is going to be. Now, synthetic division is used not just with evaluating functions. It's used for checking for solutions for roots. It's a skill that you need to, to know, okay? Now, let's go back to evaluating this function. So if I'm trying to find f of 2, remember I would plug in 2 into the function and replace all the x's with the 2, just what I just did previously there, right, of all this work right there, 
Okay. Now, with synthetic division, the way it works is this. Well, what the remainder theorem is telling us, if you want to find f of 2, you just put your little 2 right here. Okay. And this is that what we call an x minus k. All right. And k is the number we're evaluating for. So this is the linear factor x minus 2. All right. Now I'm getting kind of into uh, this, you know, I'm not going to be able to teach to all of this synthetic division, linear factors, polynomial division. There's, there's a lot kind of going on here, but I just want you to understand. Let's go back up to the definition. Okay. Here, the remainder of a polynomial, the remainder of a polynomial divided by x minus 2, in this case, we're divided by the linear factor x minus 2, is equal to f of k, okay, which in our case is going to be f of 2. So if we divide by x minus 2, it's the same thing as evaluating the function of uh, f of 2. Sorry, so if we divide by x minus 2, the linear factor, and we look at the remainder, all right, that's equal to the same value of um, evaluating a function for f of 2. Okay, of course, it's this uh, function right here. You will get questions with linear factor, uh, factors, etc., and your teacher will try to trick you. But let's just get you to understand the remainder theorem um, and really master this. And once you get this, you can handle all the other problems. Okay, so here's the setup again, all right? So for synthetic division, all, right, all there are coefficients, and we put a 2 here because we're trying to evaluate for uh, f of 2. And what the remainder th uh, theorem says, once you do our little synthetic division, whatever value is in this box, this is the remainder, all right, is equal to f of 2. Now, what was our f of 2? Well, if you remember, f of 2 was 31. Okay, f of 2 was 31 right here, so we would expect... Um, that we're going to end up with a 31 as a remainder. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually do this. And it's so fun. I tell you, synthetic division, I could do these problems all day long. It's just really cool stuff. Okay, so here's how it works. Of course, I already uh, wrote out the work in advance, but uh, let's follow. Okay, so we got four, negative two, one. We've got our coefficients. First step you do, you take this first number, whatever it is, and you drop it down. Boop. You drop it down underneath that line just like that, okay? That's step number one, no matter what kind of synthetic division problems you're doing. Now, at that time, or the next thing you're going to do, once you have your number there, you're going to multiply that 2 times 4, right? So what do you get? 2 times 4 is 8, okay? There's our 8 right there. You understand that? So I drop this down, boom, and then I multiply 2 times 4, 8 goes underneath that second number, then I'm going to add down. Negative 2 plus 8 is, you guessed it, 6. All right? Now, at this point, you're just going to repeat the same thing. Okay? You're going to go, all right, 6. What do I do next? Well, 2 times 6 is what? 12. All right? You're putting your answer right there. Then you're going to add down 1 plus 12. Yeah, you're super smart. Yeah, that's 13. Yes, you are correct. That's 13. All right, what do I do with my 13? Well, I'm going to multiply that again by 2. You see, just keep repeating. 2 times 13 is 26. Okay, now here we're on our last column. Okay, there's no more. So 5 plus 26, whatever that answer is, goes in our little remainder box. And you can see 26 plus 5 is 31. That is our remainder. And that is the same thing as what we just did here as evaluating a function for f of 2. And now if we were to evaluate the function for f of 2, we would get 31. We already did that, okay? But, you know, we could do the same thing here and just look at our remainder. And this is the same thing as evaluating a function for f of 2. That is the remainder theorem. So you need to know, obviously, about synthetic division, all right, and how to work with it. I think I'm going to make a dedicated video just on the synthetic division and do some other problems, but um, there's other things involved, okay, when we talk about um, the remainder theorem, right? The remainder theorem is related to uh, looking for roots of uh, more advanced polynomials, higher degree polynomial functions, okay? It's not just about evaluating functions. That's what it's about, but it comes into play, just this whole aspect of this remainder is the same thing as um, 
you know, evaluating functions. Now, let's just suppose here real quick, what if I evaluated a function f of 2 and I got 0? Okay, now, of course, that, that's not the, uh, the point, but let's say I did end up with a 0 right here as a remainder. What would that tell you? Okay, well, that would tell you that this x, okay, x uh, equals 2 is a solution to that polynomial function or an x-intercept. All right, so this is kind of where this is all heading or related topics. So looking at that value of the remainder, if it's zero, hey, wonderful, this number would be a solution. If it's not, well, what does it mean? Well, it just means that if you were to evaluate a function at that for that particular value, it would uh, that remainder is what you would get. Okay. All right. So as I uh, promised, uh, the remainder theorem is just so awesome. You know, um, it's one of those things that you definitely need to know if you're at this level of math. You know, okay, you're going to get these little um, theorems, the remainder theorem. You're probably going to be studying the rational root theorem, uh, this little P over Q stuff. And there's a lot involved when you're looking at a polynomial with a degree higher than 2. Because if this was the, deg if the degree of the polynomial was 2, then you would be dealing with a quadratic uh, equation. But if it's 3 or higher, then we do all, then we just have an opportunity to use all this cool stuff, the remainder theorem, rational root theorem, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. So if this video was enjoyable and if you liked it in some way, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully, uh, and you like my uh, teaching style, um, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Okay. I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my uh YouTube channel, been on YouTube for 10 plus years at the time of this video. Those videos are there for you, okay? Obviously, I love teaching math, and I'm trying to help you out whatever level of mathematics that you might be at. So, you know, um, again, just check out, uh, I try to organize my videos in, in pretty logical playlist, so you can, you know, you know uh, scour through those to see if you need additional help with other topics. But if you want my best help, check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.